Two students from Georgia say that they were suspended after they publicly posted photos of crowded hallways and students failing to wear masks. Again, going against the CDC guidelines for safely reopening schools. Now this comes as new cases of coronavirus do surge in most major parts of the country, including in Georgia. Now following the backlash as a result of these two students getting suspended, luckily the principal at least called one of the students that we know of and said that the suspension has been reversed. But first, let me give you the details on why these students were suspended in the first place. So the photos show students, as I mentioned earlier, packed into hallways between classes, not appearing to practice social distancing. And with few masks visible amid the coronavirus pandemic, they went viral after being shared by the account Free Your Mind Kid on, on Twitter. So let's take a look at what that tweet looked like. And it includes the image that you know I, I certainly saw floating around the internet over recent days. You see that packed hallway and obviously no one seems to be really following the CDC guidelines for being in school amid this pandemic. So Hannah Waters is one of the students who ended up getting suspended. She's 15 years old and initially she was she was slapped with a five day suspension, out of class, out of school suspension. And she remained defiant. She felt that it was important to share the details of what was going on. Here's an example of a photo that she shared with the world, with the internet. And then she shared the following quotes with BuzzFeed News. She's like, the policies I broke stated that I used my phone in the hallway without permission, used my phone for social media and posting pictures of minors without consent. Uh, but she says that she felt the need to do it. Uh, she needed people to understand how unsafe the situation was. Not only did my school open, but they have not been safe. Many people are not following CDC guidelines because the county did not make these precautions mandatory. And um, after the two students were suspended, there was an announcement on the intercom. Uh, meant to really threaten other students who are thinking about posting online. So I want to take a quick listen to that. Anything that's going on social media that is negative or light without permission, that's photography, that video, the same thing, there will be consequences for those students or anyone who sends out those pictures. So please be careful and not send out things. You know you have news media who want to contact people and get more things. Please be mindful, please be careful. And again, there will be consequences for people who send things out. So the effort by school administrators has been, okay, we need to put a lid on this, make sure that students don't feel in any way comfortable sharing what the reality is on the ground at this school. And then, you know, basically find a way to cover up the fact that this district hasn't taken coronavirus seriously at all. In fact, let's take a listen to a conversation that went down in late May, which perfectly sums up um, how school administrators really didn't take this threat seriously. It's like y'all are saying, um, I, I want to, as a board member, you know, encourage us to start back normal on August 3rd to the availability of the law that we have. Um, the assumptions of the CDC guidelines, I want to remind everybody, CDC is not a governing authority in this state. All they can do is make recommendations. I would like to see Paulding County lead the way and as an absolute normal return to school on August 3rd that we can possibly do unless the governor or the State Board of Education does not allow us to do it. Um, there's a lot of assumptions going around about this. It's gonna be unattainable, just like Ms. Cobb said with budget cuts, there's no way you can do this. I personally, I, I don't like to use this language, but those CDC guidelines in my opinion are complete crap. And um, I want our students, uh, they've missed a lot already. Um, I know some of us have missed a lot in our personal lives, but it's not fair to these kids to continue um, to cram something down their throat that's not affecting them. And uh, I want to commend Dr. Otot for your comments. I want to commend you guys for working on this budget. But, but I want us as a school district in Paulding County to lead the way in an absolute normal return to normal activities on August 3rd if we are allowed to by law without buying into the hype that is out there that's gonna keep us from doing it. Not right now, that's all it is, is hype. There's no law, there's no recommendation, there's no, there's nothing that's gonna force us um, to have to do what is going around social media and in the news media right now.
Okay. So okay. Jr. Uh, uh, they think uh, it's uh, just uh, hype. Are we paying attention? Are we paying attention? This is how it's been working from for the whole process. So Trump and his administration, uh, including Betsy DeVos and Vice President, everybody is in front of cameras talking about how safe and awesome and perfect it's going to be if you just go back to school. When the CDC puts out particular guidelines that says, hey, if you are going to go back to school, do it this way so that we can have as safe of a return as possible. Now, when that came out and then Trump decided to complain on Twitter about how much these things are unattainable, too costly, who cares, children don't get sick anyway. Let's move on past this. You see the next step is, and they, oh, I'm sorry. And they also said, DeVos was good on this. Um, every, every school district is different. We have to allow them to implement things the way that works for them and their students. Why do we trust people like this guy who was sitting at a school board a, a, a meeting in May and talking about how kids are, are barely affected by it? Who else to be here to say that? Um, uh, how we need to reopen the schools fully, it doesn't really matter that much. People are losing their, their experiences. You might lose some experiences if you die. Um, also, no, ex, no no talk about the teachers, no talk about the staff, no talk about the way they could be affected. Who cares about those people? Because Trump knows in states like Georgia that are headed by, govern, uh, by uh, Brian Kemp, the governor there, they're gonna continue his same policies. So as again, the school board member mentioned, hey, so the governor, until someone tells me we have to do something responsible, we're not gonna do anything responsibly. So mm-hmm. we continue to go through this 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 explanation and these these ridiculous points about allowing people to just do it the right way and they'll do it the right way because the pressure comes from where you're actually encouraging them not to do the right thing and then when children show up and say hey high schoolers not not, not adults high schoolers that have to take pictures of the situation and go this looks bad somebody's going to get sick hey this isn't this is not attainable this is something we can't sustain here when they do that, then you punish them. This is how we operate in this country. We don't punish the people who are who are throwing around misinformation, who are now not listening to scientists and doctors and people who research this stuff. We're gonna listen to people like Donald Trump, Betsy DeVos, and Mike Pence, who have what kind of medical reason or backing for what they're saying. They have a monetary reason for it, they have a reelection reason mm-hmm. for doing it. All those are going into now your children being at this school. Now, these next parts are alleged. There's been two kids that have allegedly in this school district, maybe even in this particular school that have not tested positive for it because it doesn't affect them at all. And then once it does affect them or maybe doesn't show enough symptoms for us to care about their life, then maybe they'll pass it on to someone else. Maybe they go back home and give it to this next person. We don't really know because they packed a thousand kids in a school. Only on a three, they went only three days this week, by the way. That was their precaution to go three days this week and then take the last two days off so they can reassess what they've done. This same guy, I'm sorry to filibuster this, but this same school board member has been on Twitter responding to some people who are on this thread talking about this problem going, don't you guys have better things to to, uh, worry about right now? Because uh, the first three days of our school have been flawless and perfect. No, they haven't. This Hmm. is flawless and perfect to you. And the reason they don't want the pictures out there is because he needs to be able to say our school is flawless and perfect and they can't have the proof of, of of otherwise to make them look bad. Well, you know, uh, there was so much backlash over the two students who were uh, censored and who were punished for telling the truth about what the conditions were in the school uh, that they they did reverse those suspensions. But regardless of what happens on a school by school basis, even if they're super effective in censoring people, you can't censor what the data indicates. And if you look at the data in the state of Georgia, I mean, you'll notice the upward trend in the number of new coronavirus cases, right? So when they when they saw that upward trend, they they decided, right? That the school board decided in this case in Paulding County that you know what we're gonna ignore that we're gonna go ahead and open anyway, and we're gonna do exactly what Trump does: pretend like there isn't an issue, and just come down hard on anyone who tries to contradict that messaging. And that's exactly what they attempted to do with these students. And in the meantime, people are gonna get sick, people are gonna die, and it's unnecessary. It's really unnecessary. You know, It's one thing to say like we need to reopen our schools and we're definitely gonna follow the CDC guidelines. But in this case, I mean, the school officials were defiant from the beginning. They didn't take it seriously from the beginning. They opened prematurely anyway. And unfortunately, innocent people are gonna pay the consequences of that. Wanna win a free electric scooter? Well, our partners at Aspiration and Zoom Electric 
are making it possible. All you have to do is head to tyt.com slash green summer for your chance to win.